let me know when. Hello, everyone, and thank you for being with us this morning. Your voices and your tireless efforts to prevent gun violence and save American lives are so truly precious to me. A mother, a survivor, and now as a United States representative. I'm Congresswoman Lucy McBath, and I represent Georgia's 6th Congressional District. My work to prevent gun violence began after my son Jordan was killed by a man with a gun almost nine years ago. Jordan was just 17 years old, and I firmly believe that my most important title will always be Jordan's mom. As we enter the spring season, I stand in awe at the beauty of this time of year that it brings to our nation's capital. With this artistic and beautiful flower installation on the mall, we are reminded of its painful symbolism, representing 40,000 American lives taken from us every single year due to senseless, often preventable, gun violence. And yet, the beauty of each floral arrangement is a reminder that spring is a season of rebirth, renewal, and change. Yes, change has come to Washington, D.C., and to the movement to end gun violence in America. Just last week, I and my colleagues sat in the Rose Garden with so many of our speakers here today to listen to President Biden as he announced bold actions to address the epidemic of gun violence in America. He made it clear that his administration is going to fight to keep all of our families safe. President Biden is taking concrete actions that are building a strong foundation upon which my colleagues and I seek to grow and send legislation to his desk. It is now up to Congress to strengthen that foundation and make meaningful progress at the federal level for the first time in decades. The President's call to action represents one of the most pivotal moments in our movement yet. And all of us here today, survivors, advocates, and lawmakers, are a powerful, united front in this fight to save American lives. We are determined, more than ever, to sustain this momentum. Congress has a duty to act. On behalf of our neighbors and our communities, Congress must advance these life-saving measures. And I've never been more confident in our ability to make change and to save lives. My colleagues and I in the House have already taken an important first step. Last month, we passed bipartisan legislation to enact universal background checks for gun sales, to close the Charleston loophole and reauthorize the Violence Against Women I've taken President Biden's charge to heart. Before leaving Washington last Tuesday, I reintroduced my federal red flag legislation, which will empower loved ones and law enforcement to ensure those who pose a threat to themselves or to others do not have access to firearms. There is simply no time to waste. We must act gun violence prevention legislation now. Survivors of gun violence have waited too long to see progress at the federal level. But the House has taken action. The President and the Vice President have taken action.
And now, thanks to the voters of Georgia and my friends and colleagues, Senator Ossoff and Senator Warnock, it's time for the Senate to act. Every single day that we don't push forth these policies, people are dying. These are common sense policies that will prevent more families from knowing the pain of losing a loved one to unnecessary gun violence. Our vote in the House last month is only the beginning. It is not the end. Having yet again passed this bipartisan common sense legislation, we call on our colleagues in the Senate to do what is right to keep Americans safe. The lives of our loved ones are in their hands. And now I am humbled by the honor and the privilege to introduce former Congresswoman Gabby Giffords, my friend and fearless ally in the movement to end gun violence. Gabby? You epitomize survivorship every single day. And I am all in awe of your humanity and your tenacity. This movement would not be where it is today without your leadership and your example. You truly set the standard for how all of us must conduct ourselves in this effort. Each step that you take and each word that you speak and every song that you sing brings us closer to making the progress that is so necessary to save lives and prevent gun violence in our communities. You are the beacon that we follow in this movement, and I am so glad to be with you today. I've known the darkest of days, days of pain and uncertain recovery. But confronted by despair, I've summoned hope. Confronted by paralysis and aphasia, I responded with grit and determination. I put one foot in front of the other. I found one word and then I found another. My recovery is a daily fight, but fighting makes me stronger. Words once came easily. Today, I struggle to speak, but I've not lost my voice. America needs all of us to speak out. Even the fight to stop gun violence. It's also a fight forged by tragedy and pain, a fight that can change lives. We are at a crossroads. We can let the shooting continue or we can act. We can protect our families, our future. We can vote. We can be on the right side of history. Please join us in this fight. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gabby, for sharing your voice and your passion and your heart with us today and every day. I pray your words flow down this mall, reach the halls of Congress, and inspire our colleagues in the Senate to take bold action. And now it is my pleasure to introduce our next speaker. When I first came to Washington, I told people that I was on a mission. Yes, I came to Congress as a mother on a mission to put an end to the gun violence that robbed me of my only son, to protect the lives of constituents that we are sworn to represent. And from my earliest days as a member of the House, Speaker Pelosi stood alongside me, supporting that mission. Madam Speaker, it has been an honor to stand with you as we made history, passing bipartisan gun violence prevention legislation and restoring funding for research that will make every American safer. 
Under your leadership, the House of Representatives has demonstrated time and time again that we have the courage to act for the people, for our children. From the moment that you reclaim the gavel in the 116th Congress, you have made ending gun violence a top priority. From the bottom of my heart and so many survivors like myself, we thank you for your support in our mission to save lives, the lives of the American people, the lives of our children. Thank you so much for your beautiful words of introduction, which I accept on behalf of the courage of the House Democrats, who again and again have passed this legislation for common sense gun violence prevention. Uh, I use two words here, honor. It is an honor to be here with, of course, our colleague, Congresswoman McBath. Uh, every day, she inspires us with her courage and her turning her tragedy into saving the lives of others. She said it was humbling an, an honor to be with Gabby Giffords, and it is indeed an honor and humbling to be with both of them for their courage. Gabby Giffords was a courageous member of Congress uh, even before the tragedy of, of her uh, Congress in the, in the grocery store, Congress on the corner. Uh, I had the privilege with other members, a couple of other members, <clears throat> to be with Gabby when she first opened her eyes following that attempt on her life. I have had the privilege of seeing her determination, whether it was speech therapy, occupational therapy, physical therapy, whatever it was, to be determined to come back to make this fight. When she came to the Congress to vote on a budget bill, was the first time many people had seen her since the tragedy. <clears throat> and I said, I said to the, in, uh, the, uh, the young people who were gathered there to see her, uh, in, in the history of our country, many young people have seen acts of courage on the floor of the House. But no one will have seen the courage of Gabby Gifford until today. Uh, she is a remarkable person, as you see. And to hear her make the remarks that she did this morning <clears throat> is a real triumph. And so, again, with humility and as an honor to Congresswoman Lucy McBath and to Gabby Giffords, again, two women with a mission. I also want to thank our other colleagues who are here. I want to thank Senator Murphy for being an endless, persistent, dissatisfied voice, especially for the children of Newtown. Who would have ever expected that when an assault was made on little children that we would not have legislation? We will have legislation because of Patrick Murphy's persistence in the Senate. Thank you, Senator Murphy. To my colleague, Mike Thompson, who has been the chair for a long time now, of our task force in the House, who is the author of the bipartisan legislation for background, sensible background checks. A hunter, a collector, a wounded veteran, been on both sides of the gun. He understands the Constitution, the Second Amendment, and he understands about safety for our children. Thank you, Mike Thompson, for your leadership. Again, from personal experience, our colleague Jim Clyburn, the distinguished whip, Democratic Whip of the House, he knew the people at Mother Emanuel Church, and he knew what legislation would have made a difference to save their lives. So with Mr. Thompson's H.R. 8 and Mr. Clyburn's 14, H.R. 1446, we will be able to save lives. So here we are, and Peter, thank you, Peter Ambler, for your leadership for Giffords. Here we are in front of this beautiful display, 40,000 flowers in front of the capital of the United States. A work of art. Sometimes art has a way of delivering a message 
that is different from just our talking about common sense. Hopefully it will touch the hearts of some of the people that we're trying to change the minds of. That every flower is a life that could be saved. That many lives have been saved because of the background checks many of us were part of in the 90s. But what is needed now is more and our colleagues will be talking about that. So I thank, I thank all of them for their courage, for their leadership, for their wisdom about how we go forward and strategic thinking. Let me just close by saying about the President of the United States. He's come on a number of occasions to be with us when the survivors have descended on Washington, D.C. They have spoken to him alone in the room because they all belong to a club that none of us wants to belong to, a club of those who have lost a child in all of this. And he has made a commitment to them, a commitment that we share, that we are not stopping until the job is done. We will be relentless, persistent, dissatisfied until the job is done. We've passed the legislation in the House. It's time for this long overdue for the Senate to act, for the people, for the children. So thank you, Gabby, for bringing us together in front of this, what would be considered a beautiful display, except for the heartbreakingness. Now, it takes your breath away to see the beauty of this art installation. But gun violence takes away the breath of so many people. It must stop. Hopefully, hopefully today will make a difference. With that, I'm pleased to yield back, and I thank our all who are gathered here and so many others who are working so hard on these issues. And I thank the families of the survivors because their persistence is going to make a tremendous difference as well. But let us again be grateful that we have a president who will sign this legislation in addition to being an inspiration for it as well. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Um, I, I believe the speaker and congresswoman have to go, so I'm going to take over um, as the MC. We are so grateful for your leadership, Speaker Pelosi. We're so grateful for your leadership, Congresswoman McBath, Gabby. We are inspired, as always, by your example. Um, I'm Peter Ambler, the executive director of Giffords. This memorial, which we've sponsored, is meant uh, to demonstrate the urgency of the problem. 40,000 Americans who die needlessly every year, a problem that can and must be solved. The American people are an indication of the unity, 90% of whom support universal background checks and other gun safety measures, the unity to act. And these leaders, these members of Congress uh, joined with us today, represent the desire to act, the manifestation of the political mandate delivered by the American people for reform on gun safety, to pass universal background checks, to close the Charleston loophole, to enact extreme risk red flag laws, and to invest $5 billion in violence intervention funding into communities across the country racked by epidemics of gun violence. I'd like to thank and um, lift up our community partners in this memorial, the Amir Healing Center in Philadelphia, which works tirelessly with victims and survivors of gun violence. Not My Generation, which works, and, which works with young people across the country and helps represent a, youth, a critical youth voice in this debate. And the Texas Council on Family Violence, which works tirelessly to keep women and families safe from the deadly nexus between gun violence and domestic violence. Um, it is now my deep honor to introduce three more leaders in this fight for a safer America. Our Majority Whip, Congressman Clyburn, the Chairman of the House Gun Violence Prevention Task Force since 2013, our tireless champion, Congressman Mike Thompson, and our tireless champion, a lot of tirelessness going on here, um, our tireless champion in the Senate, 
um, the irreplaceable uh, senator from C Connecticut, Chris Murphy. Congressman Clyburn. Thank you very much. Let me begin by thanking Gabby Giffords. When I was growing up in a little postness down in South Carolina, my father used to say to me all the time, son, you lead by precept and example. Gabby may be having difficulty laying out the precepts, but my God, your example of leadership, it is so courageous. On well, last night when I spoke with some of your people, I said to them, I will never forget the day that you came back to cast your vote on that budget bill. I stood at the back of the chamber right across the aisle uh, from our colleague uh, up in New York, uh, and we both wept watching you cast that vote. And thank you so much for the leadership you've given here. The American people are very clear. Over 90% of the American people support we're doing what we're doing here. And over 90% of the people who apply to purchase a gun will have their uh, eligibility established instantaneously. 97% of the people will have their eligibility established within the current three-day waiting period. But about 3% of them will fall in a little window that we are trying to close by closing the Charleston loophole. So I want to say to Mike Thompson that I am thankful for his efforts to expand background checks. We are trying to extend a waiting period. I don't know why uh, the system did not catch the perpetrator of the Emanuel Nines murders uh, within the three-day period. It may have been an error, unintentional, or it may have been an error, intentional. And that's why we believe that there's something wrong with saying that if you don't complete the background check in three days, irrespective of your eligibility, you can get the weapon. If we had not had that three-day limitation, we would have caught the error. And nine poor souls would not have lost their lives. And that's what we're trying to do here today. Follow the example of Gabby Giffords and do what is necessary to save American lives. And with that, I am pleased to yield to Mike Thompson. Thank you, Mr. Clyburn. Uh, I'm Mike Thompson from California's 5th Congressional District. And as you've heard, I'm the chair of the House Gun Violence Prevention Task Force. It is truly an honor for me to be here with some of the great leaders who are working nonstop to put an end to gun violence. And no one stands out more than our former colleague and our dear friend, Gabby Gifford. You heard her today. What an amazing, amazing human being. And I think the speaker summed it up when she said, Gabby, you're a miracle. You're a miracle. You're a godsend. I want to thank you for everything you're doing. And Jim Clyburn and Chris Murphy, who've been working on this nonstop, they know how devastating gun violence is. And they're working to make sure that we can bring it to an end. And today, the Giffords uh, group putting together this beautiful uh, memorial. It, it's, it's not only beautiful, it's really somber. Because you look out over the beautiful display of flowers and you can't help but think about all of the victims that this represents. 40,000 victims every year. 
And not only those who died, but those who were left behind. Because victims come in all shapes and sizes. They're people, their husbands, their wives, their brothers, their sisters, their loved ones, their mothers and fathers, and their communities. Gun violence takes a toll. And we have to do everything we can to bring it to an end. You've heard about my bill, H.R. 8. You've heard about Jim Clyburn's bill to close the Charleston uh, loophole. This is a very positive step that Congress has done. And it comes at a great time this year in the 117th Congress because we have a president who understands the magnitude of this issue. And as Ms. McBath mentioned, we were there in the Rose Garden when he spoke about this. He is committed to doing everything he can to help bring gun violence to an end. Now, we've just got to finish it up. And I'm so proud to work with Chris Murphy over in the Senate. And I told him this morning that the words that I've been reading uh, when, when he's been interviewed are so encouraging. The conversations that he's having with Republicans, they've got to get it. 90% of the American people know we need to expand background checks. Why is it that a handful of U.S. senators don't hear that, don't understand that? I'm confident that Chris is going to be able to bring it home for us in the Senate. Our work's not done, but we're getting closer and closer and closer. Thank you, and I'd like to introduce uh, our friend, our colleague, Chris Murphy, senator from Connecticut. Thanks, Mike. Thank you very much, uh, Mike. It is uh, humbling to be here today surrounded by some of the strongest, most impactful advocates on the issue of gun violence. Gabby and I were elected to Congress together. Uh, our offices were right next to each other uh, on the attic floor of the Cannon Office building. Um, and I remember talking to Gabby about this issue during uh, our years together in the House of Representatives. Gabby would remind me that she was and is a gun owner, as her husband is, that they believe that there is no choice to be made between protecting our citizens and protecting people's Second Amendment rights. That's why this issue is so wildly popular amongst the public, because they don't see it as members of Congress do. To them, it's common sense. Gabby inspires uh, all of her friends in Congress every single day. I'm so grateful that the speaker was here, um, but I don't know that there has been a uh, memorial event or a press conference on this issue that I have attended in Washington that the speaker has not been at. She leads from her heart on this issue. She has made sure to make background checks and the closure of the Charleston loophole a priority in the House of Representatives during uh, her tenure as speaker. And of course, she has leaders like Jim Clyburn and Mike Thompson making it clear uh, that this is a priority for their constituents and for the full caucus. Listen, the voters couldn't be clearer about what they want. Election after election, they have sent members to Congress that support universal background checks. They have removed from Congress dozens of incumbents who got A ratings from the NRA. They had two presidential candidates, one that supported universal background checks, another who was endorsed by the NRA. And then in a special election in Georgia, they had two Senate candidates that opposed common sense anti-gun violence measures and two candidates that promised to come to Washington to support the measures that are under debate now. The voters have done everything we could have asked of them. They have done their job. Now it's our turn to do our job. The House has passed a measure that enjoys 90 percent public support. It is really hard to find anything in this country today that is supported by 90 percent of the American public. But background checks are because everyone in this country knows that this issue is personal to them. Too many Americans have been impacted themselves by gun violence. But I'm an example of the millions of parents across this country 
who have to listen to their children come home and explain to them the trauma of going through active shooter drills. Every parent in this country cannot understand why this Congress won't take easy steps to make sure that their kids are just a little bit safer when they leave the House every day. So yes, we have a fight ahead of us in the Senate. Under the current rules, we need to convince Republicans to support universal background checks and the closure of the Charleston loophole. But as Mike said, I'm encouraged by my conversations with Republican colleagues. They see the writing on the wall, an anti-gun violence movement that is growing in strength every single day, the gun lobby in retreat. It's an uphill fight, but I am confident, not just hopeful, that we will get these measures passed by the House, by the Senate, signed by a president who is a true anti-gun violence hero. And we will deliver for the memory of the thousands of individuals all across this country who are felled by gun violence every single year with action. I'll turn it back over to you, Peter. Thank you, everybody. I think we have a little time for a little Q and A. Um, so, uh, if you have a question, raise your hand, speak up. Is it is that that's okay with y'all? Um, sorry, I we're. I mean, I I think I'll take that one. Um, I, I mean, I think you know. Congress